Hi everyone. Um, today I want to talk about um, some tips on buying a property in Cyprus. Um, I've done some other videos previously, but this is a little bit more of a detailed video. I just want to say that um, these tips are only from my experiences. My family and I have been looking to buy a house for the last two years almost. And um, these are just things that we have found out um, in the process uh, as we are doing this. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not anybody legal, I'm not an estate agent, I'm not a builder or developer, I'm just somebody that's looking to buy a property. So I just wanted to tell you um, some of the things that we've discovered um, in this process. We have come very close to a couple of properties um, to buy but um, they fell through because of um, not clear title deeds and one of them um, owed some taxes, so we walked away. Anyhow, so I'm just trying to make this as painful for you as possible. Um, like I said, um, these are just my experiences. All right, so, the first thing I want to tell you is don't trust anyone. Um, whether it's the builder, the developer, the estate agent, do not trust them. Yes, there are great people here in Cyprus, um, friendly people, and always wanting to help. But when buying a property, all they see is money signs. Okay? Do not trust anyone. All they want to do is take your money and sell you the property. Okay, get their commission or the money, whatever. Um, they may take you out for coffee, they may you buy you dinner, drive you around the island. It's all great, but don't trust them, okay? People are nice, but they always have a hidden agenda. All right, the next thing I wanna say, um, the builder, the developer, the estate agent. Um, from the estate agent's perspective, make sure that the estate agent you're dealing with is a proper estate agent. Um, here in Cyprus, estate agents do not have to be licensed. Their office needs to be licensed. So uh, from my experience in Canada, to become an estate agent or real estate, you have to take a course at a college or university, um, sit for six months, pass some tests, blah, 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 to become a licensed estate agent. Here it is not the case. Anyone can become an estate agent, okay? But the estate agency, the company, has to be licensed. So do your research. See if they're marketable, see if they're trustworthy. Ask people around, okay? Now, the builder or the developer, um, they will show you the property They'll show it off plan to you or a property that's two or three years old. It's beautiful, well-maintained, nice, very pretty, shiny as gold. Ask to see projects they've done that are older, something that's five years old, 10 years old. There you will see the workmanship. There you will see how the work is, what happens to this property as it ages. Here in Cyprus, very few people and I'm not going to say everybody, but very few maintain their properties. As you drive around all over the island, you will see beautiful homes that are well maintained. And next to them is a dump. Somebody just decides to drop their garbage, their construction crap, um, trucks, vans, equipment. There are no rules or regulations on keeping the area clean. So make sure when you're buying something, you go and see an older property. You go and see what it looks like after, okay? The next thing I wanna talk about is the asking price, okay? They all put the price up, okay? And they hope that you just pay the full price. Um, I've had to deal with a couple of builders that were asking for an amount. And when I gave them an offer, they said, no, no, no. I don't take offers. I only accept full price. Well, I walked away. You know what? Nobody gets full asking price. Never. 
And um, so don't let them tell you that, no, you know, you're not, you're not going to get it because I want full price. You have the cash. Cash is king. This is a buyer's market, not a seller's market. Always negotiate the price. Okay, the next one. Beach view. This is my favorite one. Everywhere in Cyprus is a beach view. Yes, Cyprus is a tiny little island. Yes, probably from on top of a mountain, except for Mount Olympus in Shudos Mountains. I don't know if you can see the sea from there. But not everything is sea view. One kilometer away from the beach is sea view. Five kilometers is not. Ten kilometers is not. If you have to go to the top roof garden of your house, get your binoculars out to look at the sea, it is not sea view. Therefore, that reflects the price. All right? The next one, how old is the property? I have seen new properties, older properties. I have never got the exact date of the house it was built, that it was built. Unless it's under construction, obviously I can see it's brand new. But the house I'm living in is 26 years old. When I asked the owner when I was going to rent it, how old is the house? She said six. Okay, obviously you can tell the house is not six, but you can't tell if it's eight or 20, if it's maintained, okay. Try and find out the actual price of the actual, sorry, the actual age of the house. If that is of interest of you, right? Resales in Cyprus do not sell as much as new homes. I don't know why. Um, I know that in London, in Toronto, in New York, the prices are kept up high and they sell. Here in Cyprus, resales do not sell. So for that reason, you have better negotiating power. All right? As to the title deeds, the title deeds will tell you the building date of the house. And you are entitled to see the title deeds. If they tell you we cannot give them to you, then you walk away. As a seller, they are, should provide the title deeds of a property. Okay, you have a right to see them. If they tell you, well, you can go to the land register and get them yourself. No, you can't. This is personal data. You cannot get it. If you call the land registry, which I have a number of times, they tell me we cannot give you data like that. It's personal data, okay, to the person that owns the house. They have to request it. All right. The next thing they'll tell you, when you go and see a property and you like it, try and keep a poker face. But I understand, this is Cyprus. It's full of sun. You're happy to be here. And it's nice and warm. You're walking around, you're on holiday, and you're happy. So you can't keep a poker face sometimes. But the minute you see a property, the next thing that will come out of the developer or the estate agent's mouth is, there are people interested in this property, so you need to move fast. Trust me, 80% of the time, nobody is interested. This is not a buyer's market, a seller's market, it's a buyer's market. And if there are people interested in the property, let it go. You're not going to be rushed into anything. If it sells, it sells. Next, that's it. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is VAT. VAT exists in Cyprus at the moment on new houses. So a house that nobody has ever lived in, a house that was never purchased by anybody. Okay, if a house, nobody's lived, they tell you nobody's lived in it, but I've rented it out. It's not a new property. VAT does not apply there. VAT applies to homes that are brand new and you are the first person that has moved into the house. Older homes or resale homes have transfer fees. Okay, the transfer fees are calculated based on the evaluation of the house by the land registry. The day that you will sign the agreements and the person uh, you go to the land registry with, whether it's your lawyer or um, there's some kind of a clergyman. I don't know the name in English. They may be able to help you as well. Um, they are like a lawyer. They're not a lawyer, but they are licensed and they know the ins and outs of the land registry. Okay. The day you go there, the land registry office, there's a department, they will evaluate your property. Okay, it doesn't matter if you buy it for 200,000, if you buy it for 250,000. If they evaluate it for 260,000, you have to pay the transfer fees on 260,000. There's been a lot of cases where um, somebody's selling a resale house, okay, and they'll tell you in secret, 
you know, I'm selling this house for 260,000. Let's put it on the contract as 220,000 and you can give me 40,000 under the table so you don't have to pay the transfer fees as they won't, you won't be charged as much as the transfer fees. There is a calculation on the transfer fees. I can put it below on the, on the link below for you to look at, but they'll tell you, you know what, if you give me 40,000 under the table, you'll pay less transfer fees. That is not the case. What the estimation of the house is the day that you go to the land registry, that's the fees you will pay. These people are doing this because they don't want to pay capital gains tax, okay? But they may save on the capital gains tax, but you will lose because your transfer fees will be higher because you're still buying the house at 250. If they put it for 220, they're not paying tax out of their pocket, but you'll pay money out of your pocket when you pay the transfer fees. Of course, that is a decision that you need to make yourself, but for me, I want on my sales contract to have the exact amount of the house I'm buying, okay? All right, so we talked about VAT. It's currently at 19% in Cyprus as of August 30th, 2021. There is no uh, VAT on resale properties as of this date. There may be in the future. One more thing, on new built homes or flats, there is something called stamp duty, okay? And there is also a calculation, I can put it in the link for you below, which you have to pay on top of the VAT that you pay for your house, okay? All right, let's talk about number, number nine. Use a lawyer. Ask a friend to refer you to a lawyer, somebody they know, I don't know, um, somebody, a neighbor, somebody. Anglo Info may be able to reference you to a lawyer. If you're buying a property from somebody and they tell you, I have my lawyer, try and not go with them. You don't know who they are. They're probably going to try and make some money on the side. So just be careful. Like I said, don't trust anyone. All right. And always, before you do anything, agree on the fee initially. Agree how much it's going to cost you. Ask them, is there any extra hidden fees or whatever? So they don't come at the end and say to you, you know what? This cost me extra. I need another 200 euros. Agree on the price initially. All right. Departments of Lands and Surveys. This is uh, the land registry. This is where you're going to go when you buy your property. And um, with the developer or the person that's selling the house or the maybe the estate agent sometimes assists as well. And they will transfer the house to your name or the property. Um, and there you will get a title deed. There is a website, uh, and I can link it below, where you can go to it. And like I said before, they should provide you with the title deeds of the house. When you're buying a new build, there's obviously no title deeds because the house is still being built, but they should be title deeds for the land, okay? The land title deeds, you are, you are, um, you are, um, entitled to see, okay? Take them to your lawyer. They're not gonna give you the original, they're gonna give you a copy. Take them to your lawyer um, or to this clergy guy to investigate. They are going to investigate if the property is clear of loans, taxes. Before you get to the final stage where you're going to the land registry, you've given this guy your money, you're going to the land registry and the property is not clear, it will never transfer your name. So you are entitled to see this. All right, so I said, new builds don't have title deeds but there is title deeds on the land. Resale homes have title deeds, okay? And you are entitled to see them. When you get these title deeds, you get a copy of them or they just give you a number. You can go to this uh, Department of Lands and Surveys, plug in the number, okay? If you don't have the number, you can actually search by region. So Larnaca, Nicosia, Famagusta, Lemesol, Paphos, you can search. If you know the street name of the uh, of the house or flat, you can actually find the street name and then you pick the municipality and you're able to see um, the details of this property. Now, why am I telling you this? This is the land registry site, okay? The land registry is the ones that are going to evaluate your house the day you go to finalize everything and pay your transfer fees or your stamp duty. So. All the properties in Cyprus are on this site. 
and there is an evaluation, an estimated evaluation that the land registry does for every single property, okay? You need to view this prior to finalizing the sale because this will give you a clear view of how much the property is actually worth. Because if you look at, I looked at a property a few weeks ago, um, it's around here in the area on Tequila Road, and the price of the property was 238,000. Estimation, valuated in 2018. And the asking price of the property was 330,000. That's really way off. And that's where you get negotiating power. A lot of people, especially estate agents and developers will say, no, 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 it's not evaluated correctly. Yes, it may be up 10, 20,000, but not such a big number because the land registry is the one that evaluates your house or your apartment when you pay the transfer fees. The land registry is the one that uh, calculates the stamp duty when you buy a new home. So these prices are pretty accurate. Like I said, they may be off 10, 20,000. Um, you may get somebody, especially a state agent, will say, you know what, this house, they've got a jacuzzi, um, they've got hardwood floor on the ground, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. Hardwood floor costs 5,000, 10,000. It doesn't bring the price of the house 80,000 more, okay? If it has a pool, yes, 20,000, okay, I'll say 30,000 if it's a new pool. But it doesn't bring the house price up to 100,000. Okay, so this house was 238. They should ask maybe 260, 265, not 330,000. It's just crazy. So don't let anybody tell you that that uh, site is incorrect. It is correct. It's just roughly, okay? But you have to remember, that's who's going to evaluate your house when you buy it. So they know exactly what they're talking about. Okay, so that was my tip number 10. Now, I want to give you some bonus tips. Remember what I said, and it's very important. Don't trust anyone. Always use a lawyer and make sure that you have crossed your T's, dotted your I's. Make sure you've seen the title deeds, they exist. Um, if they tell you that there is no title deeds because it's a new build, you should be able to see the title deed for the land, okay? If they say those don't exist, you don't walk away. You need to see these things to make sure that the bank is clear. There is no loan, no mortgage. They don't know income tax that will prevent you from getting your home. All right. So what I talk about is um, if a property is over four years old and there is no title deed, you walk away. Um, they may say, oh, it takes a long time, blah, 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 blah. I'll tell you the process very quickly. I don't know the details, but I don't need to know the details because I'm not building a house. I'm buying a house. But when you apply to build a house, you need to get a planning permit. A planning permit basically is so you're telling the land registry, this is a piece of land and I'm going to build 5, 10, 20 houses on it. And here's the extra de architectural drawings for it. Okay. Once you get that, and I'll tell you, if you're building one house, the planning permit is about 300 euros per house. I don't know how much it is if they're building bulk and you know if there's a special price they get. But in order to start working on a project, you need a planning permit. Once you get the planning permit, you have to apply for a building permit. Now, a building permit allows you to start building. There's obviously some criteria to this. We see acres and acres of land in Cyprus and they're plopping houses on them like mushrooms, okay? Those people should have a planning permit and a building permit. If they do not have a building permit, they shouldn't be building. But in a lot of cases all over the island, they do. So what you need to make sure is that once this person has a building permit, the requirements to get a building permit, that means the land has to be divided into portions right? So your house may be on a plot of 250, the next house may be on a plot of 200, the other one may be this much, this much, this much. That means that whole entire big piece of land has been divided to portions and that's where your house will be or other houses will be. If this has not happened, that means these people do not have a building permit. There is no way to get a building permit if the division of the land hasn't happened. So with the division of the land, that means they have to do sidewalks, they'll have to pave roads, okay? These are very important things. 
Um, so you need to make sure of that, all right? I know somebody may say to me, oh, I don't care if they have it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but if you buy a house and there's no planning permit, now, if the, they got the planning permit and they haven't got a building permit, the planning permit will eventually expire. It's only good for so many months, okay? So, but say you bought the house and you're like, I don't care if there's a building permit on it or if there's a planning permit, I don't care. But what happens is at the end, when you want your title deeds, they won't be able to get them, okay? The title deeds is what tells you that, it's what tells you that you own that house. It's your house. This piece of land here with this house on it is yours. And it's very important. A lot of foreigners are coming over, um, uh, buying properties and they don't know these things and they got scammed all throughout the years. Things have got better, I have to say, since 2013. The banks are more cautious. Um, if you don't have title deeds for your house or if the portion of the land hasn't been uh, transferred to you because the house is being built, the developer still owns it. Um, in a lot of cases prior to 2013, developers were being able were able to take out loans on these properties. So this per person that bought this house may have taken a loan or may have paid cash for it. The developer went and took a loan on their land without them knowing. So then the bank comes and repossesses this house and you're saying, wait a minute, I paid cash for my house. Oh, I have no proof. Well, yeah, I do. I have a sales agreement that was... Um, that was submitted to the land registry office and I have this and this and this. The bank doesn't care. The bank is ruthless. They just want to get their money back. I, as I said before, this has gotten better since 2013, but this is Cyprus. And as we go back to the Al Jazeera report, this is Cyprus. Anything can happen. You just have to be cautious. You have to always think that I need to be extra careful because there is always somebody behind me that's wanting something from me and I need to do everything in a legal way, okay? So if a house is older than four years old and there's no title deeds, they're probably never gonna get them. They'll tell you, oh, the developer has declared bankruptcy. There's a government scheme that you can apply to get your title deeds. Well, I'm not gonna give you 300,000 or 250,000 or even 100,000 for a play, a house, an apartment, that I need to go and chase lawyers and find people and go around the island and go to this government office and this government office and drive myself crazy to try and get title deeds. Yes, the scheme does work, but I have not heard one person that the scheme has actually worked and they got their title deeds. They probably have to wait seven, eight years for the government to move and to, and when I say the government, I'm talking in general, there's certain departments, and I apologize, I don't want to bring everybody into the same boat, but there's certain departments that are doing this, and they take a very long time because they have to do their work, they have to do their investigations, they have to do all these things, and they've got tons of them. If you Google on the internet, how many homes in Cyprus do not have title deeds, you probably need a shot of whiskey after that, all right? So just be careful. Um, so the scheme does work, but it takes a long time and it'll probably cost you extra lawyer fees, which you've already paid, all right? Now, one of the things I wanna talk about, um, I talked about the Department of Land Surveys where you can check the valuation of your house and how much it was worth, and then you just see how much the, actual, the person is actually asking for and decide whether you wanna buy it or not. The next thing I wanna talk about is how are they costing these? How is the developers costing the houses. How is the person that's reselling this flat is costing it? There is no way. They just plop numbers out of the air. All right. Now, if it's a resale property, the person should, as they do in other countries, uh, and I don't want to use Canada again as an example because they have their own problems, but I know that this system works well with buying properties. Um, they should be an evaluation done to the property. An evaluator comes, evaluates your property, and gives you a certificate of how much your property is worth. This does not happen in Cyprus. These people do exist, and they're hardworking people, but nobody uses them. Very few people use them. They usually use them when it has to do with a bank loan, and the bank has to get an evaluation of the property in order to see what type or how much of a mortgage they're gonna give the person buying a property. Private home owners that are reselling their homes do not do this. So you need to use this um, departments of lands to get an idea of what the evaluation of your home is. Also, you need to make sure that 
when they say a price, it's not the real price. They're probably telling you a price of what they owe their mortgages at the bank. I owe 349,000 euros, 549 cents. And that's what I want to get for my house. Well, that house isn't worth that much money because you don't know how many mortgages they've taken on, how many loans they've taken on. They could have taken a loan to fix something afterwards or whatever. And prior to 2013, I said the banks were just giving loans to everybody. So you need to use this land, um, Department of Lands and Registry and Surveys, okay? Which I'll put the link below. Buying a new property, okay? So buying a new property is all beautiful and nice and shiny and it has pools and the gardens are really done well, whatever. If I had a piece of land and I asked a builder to come and build me a house and I say, how much is it gonna cost? They're gonna tell me 1,000 euros per square meter, all right? So if I'm building a 160 uh, square meter house, it should cost me 160,000. Maybe 10, 20,000 extras, like, you know, the fencing around, like not fencing the wall, and maybe the cesspit, whatever, all these things, the extras that are outside the house, okay? But if you are going to get somebody to build your house for a thousand euros per square meter, and you tell the developer that, they'll say, no, 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 we've spent way more money building this house. Well, how? When you buy a new house, they give you a sheet of paper that tells you how much you could spend on tiles, how much you can spend on uh, hardware in the kitchen, how much you can spend in kitchen cabinets, how much you can spend on um, stuff for the bathroom, blah, blah, blah. So they give you a breakdown of that. 15 euros per square meter this, 12 euros per square meter this, um, 500 euros for this. This gives you the breakdown of the thousand euros per square meter. If I was to hire a builder to come to my house, to come to my property and build a house, they would charge me 1000 euros per square meter, okay? And if it's a aluminum frame or wood frame, it would be 775 euros approximately per square meter, the last time I checked. So how are these people coming up with these prices? So I think to myself, a small calculation that my husband and I have done is, if a land, a piece of land, say 250 square meters, we looked it up on the Departments of Lands and Surveys, cost in the uh, Larnaca area, say 60,000. I'm not talking seafront here. I'm just talking somewhere, you know, um, five or six kilometers um, north of the sea, okay? If it costs 60,000, and if I built a 160 square meter home at 1,000 euros, that's 160,000, plus 60, that's 220,000, okay? So say I add another 20, 30,000, okay? Say 30,000, I add another 30,000 on top for all the extra stuff they have to do, you know, like uh, the water system or the sipping, sipping tank, whatever it's called, all that stuff. So say 220,000 plus 30, 250,000. These people are asking prices of 410,000. They don't it, don't, it doesn't match to what the price costs. A pool is about 20,000. If you were to, to go to a pool place and say, come to my house, dig up a hole and make a pool, it'll cost you 20, 25,000, depends on the size. The average pool is about 15,000. So when a house, a property, say you calculated the way I'm telling you, is about 20, 250,000, and you add a pool, 270,000, because most of these places, especially on Dekelia Road, along the beach, have pools, where are they getting the 480,000 from? You have to ask yourself that. What's happening in Cyprus right now with these golden visas and these investment schemes, um, they are ripping people off. These poor people that are coming over, and they're not poor, but they, I'm just saying that they are coming over to buy a property here for whatever scheme they're going to follow. They're paying 100, 150,000 euros more than what their properties are worth. You have to be careful with that. You need to do your homework, ask for title deeds, um, find a lawyer that is trustworthy and do your homework all the time. The departments of lands and surveys can really help you. Anyone you call in Cyprus, you may have to go through three or four numbers if you want to ask questions, but they can help you. If you have questions to ask, don't ask one person, they'll give you something. A lot of people sometimes just say, oh, this is what it is and that's it. Ask two or three people, ask different opinions, ask people's experience, be careful. And again, trust no one. I thank you and have a good day.